Market your list right. Now that you have figured out your payload content, the next step is to understand what kind of giveaway you're going to have to use to get people to sign up for your mailing list. In an ideal world, people can see the value you bring to the table. They only need to look at the content you share as well as the crucial information they get from your premium content. They see this premium content and they see what you're about, what you have to offer, and why it's such a good idea to sign up to your mailing list. Unfortunately, things don't work out that way. Even if you have the very best blog posts and articles on your website, people still need a push to sign up to your mailing list. This is where incentives come in. You're going to offer free, high-quality premium content, but you're going to repackage it in a way that people would appreciate. Maybe you put in a book. Maybe you come up with some sort of cheat sheet or resource sheet. Or perhaps you can strip it all down into a booklet or even convert it into software form. Whatever the case may be, this premium free giveaway content is going to act as an incentive for people to join your mailing list. They get a copy of whatever it is you are giving away for free in exchange for their email. I call this an ethical bribe. You're bribing people to sign up to your list. Normally, they wouldn't. Only a very few people would take the time and bother to sign up for your list, regardless of how awesome your blog posts and articles are. That's just the reality. Finding out what to use as an incentive. I hope you can see the logic behind giving away freebies so people can sign up to your mailing list. People need a push. People need some sort of extra sweetener to get the deal going. They need something extra to get them off the fence and onto your mailing list. Now, the next step is to figure out what kind of incentive to give away so people would join your mailing list. The good news is, you don't have to start from scratch. You don't have to take wild guesses. You don't have to take shots in the dark. When you pay attention to your top performing original content, you should have all of the information you need to come up with a compelling incentive. For example, if you run a gardening blog and you notice that a lot of people click on share and otherwise engage with your content on tomatoes, it's probably a good idea to come up with a free giveaway book on how to build your own inexpensive tomato greenhouse. You see how this works? Pay attention to your best performing original content. Look at the questions they answer and look at the questions they fail to answer. This way, you can use your popular content as a launching area for your incentive content. You let your readers know that if they need more information, and they will because the content that they're enjoying or missing certain items, they should click on this link. That link, of course, is your squeeze page. The squeeze page advertises your giveaway and lists out the reasons why people would want to download that giveaway. It's pretty straightforward. You're just offering premium content that your other freely available content is already pointing to. They're pointing to that content because they don't contain that material. They do a good job of building credibility and authority. They do a great job adding value to the lives of your readers, but it's also obvious that there are certain parts that are missing. For those extra materials, they have to sign up. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost them a dime, but they need to sign up to your mailing list. This is how you set up your mailing list. It has to be closely tied to your premium content. Coming up with incentives or freebies that look like they came out of left field because they're unrelated to whatever it is you're currently doing is not a good idea. Chances are quite good that you're going to fail. When you come up with incentive content that is directly related to the materials you're already sharing, you create a feeling of value. There's also a feeling of exclusivity. After people have seen your content and have become aware of what you are and what your brand is about, you let them in on a special premium. This is a special deal that other people who haven't accessed your brand have no idea about. Position all your original content to push your mailing list first. To play up the value of your incentive content, you first have to promote the value of the mailing list. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but if you think about it, it makes all the sense in the world because in reality, it's the mailing list they're signing up for. The freebie that you're giving away is just a bribe. It's intended to get people to enter their email address and nothing more. If you were to use all your original content to play up the fact that people can get this additional content, don't be surprised if people sign up to your list and quickly unsubscribe because they really don't care about your list. Again, you're walking a tightrope here. On the one hand, you want people to get excited about the premium you're giving away for free in exchange for their email address. On the other hand, you want people to see the value that they would get by being members of your mailing list. This is how you should play it. All your original content should push your mailing list first. I'm not saying that you should not tie it into the incentive, but your original content should highlight the fact that when people join your mailing list, 
they will continue to get valuable information. This is the key, because when you use your tried and proven content to push mailing list membership, people are less likely to join your list and immediately unsubscribe. They are aware of the value that the list can possibly bring to their lives. You then play up the premium content as part of the membership. In other words, it's an extra. It's not the main focus of the list. Keep the list separate from the premiums you use to get people to sign up to your list. I hope this is clear because you want to play up the list first, but it must be obvious that you are using the premium content, whether it's a free book, a booklet, a cheat sheet, some sort of pre-recorded video or something else, as a means to get people to make a decision. That's the bottom line. You want the incentive to push people to make a decision to join your list, but all your original content and your website by extension should push the reader to see the value of being a list member. A lot of social media marketers completely blow this. They think that it's all about marketing the incentive. Well, to continue with the example I raised earlier, what happens after you get people to sign up to your list in exchange for the greenhouse guide? That's right. Nothing. Why? You played up the value of the greenhouse guide to such an extent that people are clueless as to what other value they would get from your mailing list. Indeed, don't be surprised if people start reporting your list as spam after you start sending them updates. They were so focused on getting the free book that the updates from your mailing list completely took them by surprise. This happens all the time because of faulty messaging on your blog or website. You cannot afford to play the game this way. You worked hard to pull all this social media traffic to your site. You spent a tremendous amount of time, effort, and resources to build a solid brand. Unfortunately, you're dropping the ball if you market your mailing list this way. You must sell the list first, but the incentive must be used to push people to make a decision. This is the proper order of priority. Anything else will fail. Set up your squeeze page for maximum social appeal. As I mentioned earlier, you should use your content to push your mailing list. You should use your content to upsell your squeeze page. But this doesn't mean that you can get away with badly designed squeeze pages. Nah, it's not going to cut it. Your squeeze page must be well designed. After all, this page is a specialized recruitment page. When people get on this page, you have to make the case as to why they should join your list, and not just for the incentive. While the incentive takes a big chunk of the real estate of a squeeze page, you should be clear about the fact that people are signing up to your list. With that said, you have to make your case. Why should people bother with your updates? Why should people stay on your mailing list? What kind of value would they get? Remember, people are always asking what's in it for me. Your squeeze page must answer that question effectively, clearly, and powerfully. Your squeeze page must be well-designed enough to be able to make that connection, while at the same time, it must be easy to market on social media. Maybe you should have a graphic on your squeeze page that can be easily posted on Pinterest. Maybe you should have a video on your squeeze page that can be easily shared on YouTube. There are many ways you can go with this. What's crucial is that your squeeze page must be social media ready. At the same time, it should also do a good job of recruiting people. Set up the right confirmation page. When people join your list, thank them and make them feel welcome. You also have to clue them in regarding the content they should expect to receive. Make them feel that they just did the right thing. Make them feel that they solved a major problem. Not only do they get access to the digital freebie you're giving away, but they're also going to be receiving valuable information regarding a particular topic that they have problems with. This is how you sell the list. Simply hyping up and over-promoting the premium is not going to help you convert social media traffic into cash. That's just not going to happen. You have to sell the list. You have to build trust in the list.